Greco-Roman wrestling was, and I was living in Japan for about two years, and Coach Rokitis gave me the opportunity to come try out for the Marine team, and I was working out with world team member Bryce Adoras, and he was just beating me up every day. And from there, um, i just been putting the work in, and Coach has been there throughout the process and told me to believe in the journey and believe in the process. And we've had the lumps and the bruises and the losing, and we just kept working through that, kept trying to progress and get better. So I'd say over the last year, um, it's just been more of a mentality change, but having the right team around me and the right program and having my coach there, no matter if I win or lose, he's there for me no matter what. So it definitely means a lot. Thank you. Anybody else? This question is for Ali Reagan or, and or Lauren Leaf. Uh, Hawkeye Wrestling Club has been able to put uh, four members uh, into the Final X competition for one world team member. Um, can either of you expand upon how uh, Hawkeye Wrestling Club has been able to produce uh, you know, been able to result in four members uh, wrestling in Final X? Um, I mean, we have great coaches. Obviously, the Brands Brothers, everyone knows they're awesome. Um, Perry works with us a lot, and the whole training staff is good. We have great training partners, and we scrap every day in the room. And it's really hard not to be motivated and really go after it every day in the room because everyone around you is doing that same thing. So definitely the energy in there is really electric and every day you gotta go to war. So it's definitely each person gets better and I think we have a great coaching staff too. So yeah, really really what Ali said, I mean when you put uh, all all of uh, a group of women that are, you know, at at the top level in a in a room together, you know, filled with intensity that Iowa brings with the coaching staff that they have and given individual work, I mean you're gonna have a great outcome. And that's that's what we're building. Anybody else? <laughs> this is for any or all of the Army guys. Uh, last week in Rutgers, I'm sure everybody saw that uh, the Army guys went 8-0. and Do y'all feel any added pressure going into this to get the job done and all the y'all's teammates and the performance they put on last week? I would say absolutely not. I think uh, seeing our teammates get 8 no, 4 4 on the world team is nothing but motivation to us. You know, majority of us was all at my house watching it. So, I mean, one team, one fight for the Black and Gold family. So, that just motivated us to work even harder this past week for our goals right now. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, that's the standard for the Black and Gold anyway, winning. So, um, of course, we're there to support our teammates. But a lot of times we're wrestling at the turn the same time they are. And so, it just comes with the environment. You got to learn how to be into their matches, but when it's time for you to compete, you got to focus on yourself and get the job done. This question is for Lucas Sheridan. Um, the Army has a ninja squad, the 55, 60, 63, and 67, they're a pretty elite squad. Do you think that uh, making it to the final webs are going well this year qualifies you to be a ninja squad, or are you going to make your own squad? <laughs> I stick with the Snorlax squad. Shout out Toby Erickson, Jacob Mitchell, and Sam Souza. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, that'll do it. We got uh, some time to break out individual sessions with some of these athletes if you want. Otherwise, uh, this session goes down tomorrow at noon. Thanks for showing up. Cool. On tomorrow at noon, weigh-ins will be taking place at between 9:30 and 10. Um, obviously, spots on the line to represent the United States at the World Championships in Kazakhstan this September. Um, we're going to go through match by match, introduce each competitor, um, and then each competitor, I want you to give an opening statement, and then I want you to say one thing about your opponent, <clears throat> for better or for worse. I'll leave that to you. Um, once we get through that, we'll open it up to the audience for questions, and then uh, once we're through with that, we'll have kind of one-on-one -on -one breakout sessions where the members can come up talk to the athletes individually. Other than that, let's, let's get right to it. Our first bout of the morning will be 59 kilograms. We'll have Lauren Louis, who is a World Team Trials champion, Dave Schultz champ, junior World Team member, and a three-time WCWA All-American representing NYAC and Hawkeye Wrestling Club, Lauren Louis. What's up, guys? Just glad I didn't fall off the stage again up here. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I'm wrestling Allie Reagan tomorrow. Um, she's an uh, extremely accomplished uh, opponent, and I'm excited to wrestle, team member. And um, she has a cat named Sushi. And, and Butters. She has two. All right. On to the cat lady. Allie Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Come on. She's a five time world team member, two time world silver medalist representing the Suckiest Kids in the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. She was the U.S. Open champion, Allie Reagan. Hey, um, yes, I'm Allie Reagan. Um, Hawkeye Wrestling Club out of Iowa City. So is Lauren Louise. I'm um, ready to go to war tomorrow, and yeah, zero hour is upon us, so let's go. Alright, thank you. Moving on, we're going to go 60 kilograms. Our first competitor was the World Team Trials Champion 2017. World Team Member 2008 Olympian representing Army WCAP. This is Ildar Habisov. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, great to be here. Thanks everyone. I want to say about Mike. I think he's doing better, and let's figure out what's going on for guys then. His opponent is the U.S. Open champ this year. He's a two-time junior world team member. Also representing Army WCAP, Leslie Finfinger. Uh, how's it going, guys? My name is Leslie Finfinger. Uh, I go by Mike. But uh, one thing to say about my opponent, uh, man, I can't stand that guy. <laughs> I just kidding no. <laughs> you know, she, he's a he's a great father. And he's a, that's what he is. He's a great father and uh, somebody who I look up to in that area. So it's gonna be good tomorrow. Looking forward to it. It's gonna be a bat. All right. Thank you. Next weight class, 55 kilograms. This young lady was your world team trials champion. She's a three-time U23 world team member. Representing the Sunkiss Kids, Dominique Parrish. Hi, I'm Dominique. Um, just really excited to be here, excited to compete tomorrow. And Jakara is an amazing competitor. She's also really funny. <laughs> Her opponent, as she just spoke about, she was a U.S. Open champion. She was fifth in the 2018 World Championships, third at the 2014 University Worlds, and a WCA WA champion, representing Tight Mercury Wrestling Club and the Olympic Training Center, Jakara Winchester. Champion 2017 U23 World Team member representing the Air Force RTC. This is Alex Mossing. How are we doing, guys? Alex. Uh, just want to say, Bob got a lot of respect for him, but you know, he made an Instagram post the other day that referenced Taylor Swift, and that just more respect, more respect, man. <laughs> His opponent, the U.S. Open Champion 2017 University National Champion, representing the U.S. Marine Corps. Raymond Bunker. Hey everyone, thank you for having me here today. Um, it's been a long road. I'd like to thank the Marine Corps for having me here. Um, I'd like to thank my coach, Coach Pete is the best coach in the world. Um, without my team and the Marine Corps and the support I've had, I would not be here today. So that means a lot. And for my opponent, I don't really know what Alex Mosing is talking about <laughs> when it comes to Taylor Swift. Um, but hey, I'll see you tomorrow, so it's okay. All right, moving along, 63 kilograms. We have your World Team Trials champion. He's been second and third at the U at the World Team Trials, representing the United States Marine Corps, Xavier Johnson. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Xavier Johnson again. I would like to thank the United States Marine Corps for giving me the opportunity to have this opportunity. I want to thank my coach, best coach in the world. Uh, for my opponent, Ryan Mango, I think our styles will match up pretty well tomorrow. So, that's pretty much it. All right, his opponent got here by winning the U.S. Open. He is a two-time U.S. Open champion representing Army WCAP. It is Ryan Mango. Hey guys, like I said, I'm Ryan Mango. I uh, wrestle for the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. Um, excited and ready to go tomorrow. I think our styles will match up well and it should be a fun show for fans. <laughs> 
And uh, Xavier, I always wanted to, I know I always tell you your hair looks it looks nice, you know what I'm saying? You got a fresh cut. Kinda reminds me of Gerald from Hey Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along, 97 kilograms. She was your world team trials champion, a junior world team member, and a 2013 university national champion representing Army WCAP. This is Lucas Sheridan. What's going on? Like I said, my name is Lucas Sheridan. Um, just want to take this moment to thank the Army's World Class Athlete Program, command and staff for all their support, along with the Chicago Regional Training Center for their help and preparation in getting me here. Um, one thing about Tracy, it's a fly suit. <laughs> it is. Um, his opponent at 97 kilos, he was a U.S. Open champion, two-time world team member, and in 2016 he was bronze at the Junior World Championships representing the Sun Kiss Kids, Jangelo Hancock. Hey everyone, uh, Jangelo Hancock here, bad man as y'all know. Uh, I'll be right with wrestling Lucas tomorrow, and uh, you know it's his birthday today, so I'm gonna tell him happy birthday. You know today's his day. You know no trash talking for that much, but. Uh, we don't, we don't get after it tomorrow for sure, I know that much. So be ready. Thank you guys. All right, that's our, our wrestlers. We're now opening up to questions from the audience. Willie's gonna come around the mic. Question for Giangelo. Um, you wrestle all the time. You travel overseas, you went to U23s. Uh, trials. Um, how important is it for you to continually compete? Uh, you know, for me, I, I've learned that uh, in my path, that everyone's just different, that um, getting overseas is, is my ticket. That's the way I'm going to get better, you know. If I want to be the, be the number one guy in the world, which is the goal, then I'm going to have to wrestle the baddest man on the planet. And that's my goal. I'm going to hunt them down every single day. Uh, you were the first woman to start training at the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and have expressed uh, interest in becoming a head coach of the D1 Women's Wrestling Program. Uh, with the NCAA recommendation to add women's wrestling as an emerging sport, thus hopefully getting women's wrestling more D1 opportunities, uh, what are your thoughts on Division One status for women's wrestling? I'm excited for it. I, I mean, it's going to op open up opportunities that weren't available to us as uh, college athletes and all those before us. And it's just going to open up all kinds of, you know, recovery for the women. We were talking, I, I was here with Sarah Hildebrand this morning before our workout, and we were like, oh my gosh, if we just had a facility like this available to us when we were in college. Um, so the, uh, the training opportunities that will be available, um, the partners, the coaches, the money that goes behind it, uh, just everything is going to be huge in developing our female athletes, I, I believe. And that's going to continue and flow on to... Um, you know, uh, freestyle and the senior level as well, um, getting them the resources that they need at the college level. So this question is for Xavier. Um, you obviously have probably the biggest rise in the sport since you started wrestling Greco only three years ago. Um, and uh, is Final X your biggest accomplishment to date in wrestling? I would not say it's my biggest accomplishment. I would say my biggest accomplishment would be when I stepped on the old footprints in Paris Island when I became a Marine. Because without that, I wouldn't be here sitting in front of you guys. Questions mainly for Ryan, but uh, Lucas and uh, Mike, Leslie, you can chime in. It's for, in terms of your college wrestling experience, there's so much about the grind of wrestling and you know the talk of freestyle and folk style. Greco usually gets you know, toss that out of there where how much college wrestling helps your Greco-Roman uh, training and such with the grind, that type of attitude. Uh, Ryan, specifically, you're the most accomplished on the Division One level of this group. How much did your folk style wrestling impact your Greco wrestling? And I guess Lucas and, and Mike, you guys can chime in with uh, your experience as well. All right, uh, I, think, I think it helped a lot. You know, a lot of people say wrestling is wrestling, and to some degree, I agree with that. Uh, every day you go in there, you're sweating, you know what I'm saying, putting in the work. Um, it doesn't really matter too much the style, and I did mix in uh, Greco in the summers when I was at Stanford, and um, even when I started wrestling Greco full time, I, I think in uh, let's see, maybe like '06 or '07, um, not '06 or '07, but in my past, I wrestled in the U.S. Open in freestyle, you know. So I think that overall wrestling is wrestling, you know, getting out there and grinding is grinding, and 
everything is additive. So it doesn't matter whether it's folk style, freestyle, Greco, they're still learning throughout their whole uh, career. Uh, you know, I think that uh, wrestling from college to Greco, you know, really makes a, a, good, a great difference in the, in the way that, um, you know, the grind is, is kind of the same now. Um, from college, you know, we, it was constant, you know, grind and making weight and, um, you know, just no no breaks as far as uh, training-wise goes. Like, um, so I think it's helped me a lot more in Greco this time around, it's, you know, because the rules are different. You know, it's a lot more fast-paced and uh, we got that two-hour weigh-in now, so I think it's a lot similar to the college wrestling where, you know, we've had experience, so uh, I think it translates well in this. So. Been really good this year, so yeah. Um, yeah, I'd have to agree with these guys. I mean, mainly for me, um, college really helped my Greco just because of the coaches and the mindset that they instilled in me. Um, you know, Coach Dwayne Goldman, um, Nick Simmons, Matt Powis, Pat Begain, and Joe Dubuque, all these guys, their mindsets had nothing to do with folks, all had to do with wrestling. So um, I think it pays huge, huge dividends going to college for my Greco career. Alex, chime in too with that. I forgot. Uh, the college wrestling for me just helped more with uh, the mindset, just constant grinding, working hard. Transfers over perfect for Greco and just fighting and grinding in the matches. This question is for Alex. Uh, congratulations on your recent graduation of the academy. Um, can you maybe speak to how your relationship with the OTC and how that works with your training at the uh, Air Force RTC? Yeah, so uh, the Air Force Academy has provided me tons of training opportunities. Most recently, the Air Force RTC. Uh, luckily, we're right down the road from the OTC, which has some of the best coaches and best training partners in the country. So they make this available to us so we can get down there and train in the summers, and we can help them by providing more people, and they can help us with available technique and things of that nature. Um, yeah, without the Air Force Academy, I definitely wouldn't be where I was at today. Um, our, relationship is what led me back into wrestling Greco again. We were uh, going down there to wrestle with the freestyle developmental guys and I just happened to fall over onto the Greco side and uh, rediscovered my love for it and luckily I did so I ended up here. This question is for Donnie Parrish. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your WCWA Athlete of the Year award. Uh, what does this award mean to you, not just to be wrestler of the year, but athlete of the year? And what does this say about the state of college women's wrestling being recognized at this level? Um, it's, it's a big honor to be recognized because, as mentioned before, women's wrestling isn't sanctioned by the NCAA or it just received um, status or almost. But um, when you wrestle at the WCWAs, you're wrestling all the women who are wrestling in the United States for university, like college or junior colleges, so I think being recognized as the Athlete of the Year is just a huge honor because it means that out of all the women who are wrestling, I was selected as one of the best, and it's just really humbling. And I think it's important to recognize women's wrestling, and um, recognizing through the WCWAs is one of the better ways to do that. Uh, Chikara, you were here last year at Final X, and oh, she's laughing already, she didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> That's to give you a serious one. Uh, what do you think that this past year has done for you of being number one on the ladder, being being the top dog? What, what would you say is different from this year and last year when we were sitting in this room? Um, I think I got better training. You know, I got to work with great people. I got to work with Helen. I got to work with Allie. Um, you get individual time with your coaches more, you know, everything's focused on you, so you're able to, like, make leaps in wrestling, so I think that's just about it. I got one for Allie. Um, it's kind of similar, you, both of you, similar to uh, McKenna and Steve last year. You're in the same room preparing. Um, were you training together prior to maybe this freestyle season, and, and what's it, you know, I'm guessing you guys don't train together. What's that like? Um, well, leading up to this, she's been at the OTC and I've been in Iowa, so that really doesn't <laughs> affect us right now. But yeah, I mean, when I live in to go together and partners like that, then so be it. But other than that, not really. Anything else? 
Yeah, for Eldar and Mike, uh, the familiarity there. Um, how do you how do you deal with that for tomorrow? Uh, you guys know each other pretty well. Um, probably no secrets, but um, you know, how are you going to deal with that? Well, I know it's going to be a battle. Uh, you know, I'm going to be training the room for this battle. Um, we do know each other quite well, uh, so you know that's it's going to be interesting. You know, it's just going to be real close, and we'll see who wants it more, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. I told you, girls, make it. <laughs> I'm ready for a war. I mean, I want my spot. Yeah, I want a bed. I want to go to Kazakhstan. Because my family going to be there, which is, I you know, I didn't sell them, like, about five years now. So I, I definitely will do my best tomorrow. Anybody else? Ali, you were here last year too. Um, you know, after you guys wrestled, you had a big impact on the state of Nebraska with girls high school wrestling. Um, what's kind of your stance on that and how big it would be to see another state kind of go in that direction to kind of pioneer Nebraska getting, getting girls high school wrestling? Um, I think the more that we're competing, the fact that I had an impact on women's wrestling, that's awesome. That's our job of us girls here. So I think that us doing our role and being here and performing is um, just going to lead more girls to wrestling. So I think that all of us probably wrestled boys growing up, and it's really hard, you know, and a lot of the numbers don't, you know, come out for that because it's a tough challenge. So I think that the more women wrestle, the more girls will wrestle as well. So I think us growing the sport, it's going to help grow the sport for the future, so that's really what it's all about. Question for Ildar. In terms of your background, you represented another country overseas competition. You came to the U.S., you won WCAP, had the opportunity to represent the United States. Explain the, the similarities and the differences between representing Uzbekistan and the United States. Um, representing country in uh, international level, I think is there's no difference between U.S. and Uzbekistan by representing country, but it's a huge difference um, living in the United States and living in Uzbekistan. I mean, I'm very thankful for the, the world-class athletic program to having me, because without that, without the Army, I wouldn't be here, wouldn't sit here, and wouldn't wrestle. Um, it was a great time in Uzbekistan. I was younger, I was I competed in Olympic Games, and here, like, I think, I. I'm a little bit smarter. Um, I think I'm stronger now, like mindset, 